All right. So in this case, I want us to consider a typical exam question on the part that we have worked with, uh, working with the straight lines. That is the part of our graphs. We are given in this case on question number four, given the formula, which is representing that's, uh, exactly the equation that we have been working with before of a straight line. Remember the format of y is equal to mx plus c. So they can give you this as a formula or can they can specify the equation? So the question was on 4.11, use the given formula to complete the table for the given values of x. Remember, how were you drawing this graph? You were substituting what you were given in the x values as the input to obtain the y values. So we are simply substituting in this case. Do not worry about this. So we are given y is equal to uh, our equation or the formula It's minus 2x plus a 1. So when x is minus 1, that's the first value, y is going to be what? Substitute in place of x, that's minus 2. In place of x, you put a minus 1. Minus 2x means minus 2 times an x there. So you're going to substitute this, then you add a 1 already. There's a plus 1. So that is you guys and your calculator. You can simplify this or just multiply this. That will be positive 2 plus 1, which is equal to a 3. Okay, 2 plus 1, that will be a 3. So meaning to say if x is minus 1, y is going to be a 3. You do the same thing when this x is equal to a 0 in this case. In place of x, you substitute a 0. That's minus 2 times a 0 plus a 1. So y is going to be what? Minus 2 times a 0. That's a 0 plus a 1. So y was going to be equal to 1. The same case, again, if this x is 1 over 2, which is a half. So that is minus 2 times 1 over 2, like this, plus a 1. So what is minus 2 times a half? That is a minus 1. So meaning to say y is equal to minus 1 plus a 1, which is a 0 then. So meaning to say if x is equal to 1 over 2, y is going to give us a 0 there, meaning to say, this is the x-intercept where y is equal to 0. This here is the y-intercept where x is equal to 0. Remember the concept of the x-intercept and y-intercept. All right. Then another part, when this y, uh, x is 1, you substitute there. That's a 1. So y was going to be minus 2 times 1, which is minus 2 plus 1, which is minus 1. So meaning to say we're going to have minus 1. So guys, for 2 marks, that's it. You just need to substitute. You can simply... Take your calculator, substitute everything on your calculator as it is. So what you just need is to present your formula. Then you substitute every part that you are given into the formula. Uh, this is going to be like this. We are given. Uh, that is minus 2x. So it's minus. You open a bracket for every x value that you're going to substitute. If it is minus 3, you substitute minus 3, then plus a 1. All right, that is minus two. Sorry, that's a minus two there. Then a bracket. All right, just like this. Then we're going to add a one. So plus a one, we're going to obtain a seven. All right, so in this case, we need minus three. Where am I getting the minus? We need minus one there. Where am I getting this? It's already affected on the first part that the way that I presented there. That is going to be a three. You substitute again. Let's move on to another one. When this x is as you just substitute, like that, and obtain a one, you move on, just move this arrow in, into the bracket there, you remove that, you put one over two, so that's one over a two like this, all right, that's going to be a zero, you move on, substitute, so you can just use your formula on the calculator direct, so you remove again, you substitute a one, that is going to be a minus one, so as you can see, you are obtaining exactly uh, the values that you could have just uh, used uh, like what we have already from the formula, or you can just use your calculator direct. Then the question is plot the points from the table in question 4.11, which is this table on the Cartesian plane below and join the points using a ruler to form a straight line graph. Remember, we talked about marking of the points, sketching, drawing of these lines. This represents the input X and also the output, which is, y so you've got minus three for x i mean minus one for x and also 
3 for y. It's a point where x is minus 1 and y being a 3. It's a point x versus y. Remember, how do you mark the points? You just need to locate where x is at uh, minus 1, where x is at minus 1 and y is a 3, where these two meet. They will meet at a certain point. A minus 1 going up, the 3 going this side. They will meet at a certain That is, you mark the points that are on the table. Minus 1 versus 3. So that's it. x is minus 1. Y is 3. They meet at this point. Uh, there we have got uh, 0 versus 1. Remember, I talked about this. That's the y-intercept. x is a 0 there. x, where x is equal to 0 in the y-axis. So you simply mark this point direct where y is equal to 1 in the y-axis, where y is equal to a positive 1. Then we have got 1 over 2 versus a 0 like that. All right. Look how this is, guys. It is going to be difficult for us to mark to say, but it, it is just in between halfway. But look, how is it going to be halfway? So let's just say somewhere there because this uh, 1 over 2 is just going to be halfway in between uh, 0 and 1. So that point, do not worry about it because we've got another other points to use. So use the ones that are visible, 1 versus minus 2. So this means x is 1, y is minus 1. That's 1 versus minus 1. x here is positive 1, y is negative 1. So these two, if you have to check, they are going to meet at this point. That is where you are going to mark a point 1 versus minus 1. So you are going to use your ruler. You take your ruler along these points. You mark, you, you draw a straight line along the points that you are seeing there using your ruler. So in this case, I'm just going to use this part, guys. It's difficult for me to have a ruler here. So I'm just going to Join this way, these points passing through all the points. Just make sure that you extend also your line. Do not just draw to that point, to like these points only. You can even extend your line. So that is it. Passing through the given points that you're given. Minus 1 versus 3, the 0 versus 1, the half versus 0, the 1 versus minus 3 from the table. So also uh, make sure that you go through the class where I explained about marking or labeling the points on the graph, on the Cartesian plane. So that is our graph or this line, the straight line graph that is uh, of y is equal to minus 2x plus 1. So y in this case is equal to minus 2x plus 1. You just write on the, on the line the equation. So that's it. This is a typical exam question, as you can see. They can ask you like this. From that equation, from the table that you are given, from that table that you are given, you can draw the line. Remember that. All right. Let's consider another part of our question 4.2. We are given points A, which is 1, 1, which is this one, and B, which is 0, minus 4. Take note where B is. B lies where? In the y-axis. So meaning to say we are talking about what? The y-intercept there. Where x is equal to what? Where x is equal to 0. All right. So we are given these two are on a straight line graph given below. Use the graph and the given points to answer the following questions, all right? So we're going to use this and to answer the following questions. The first question, 4.21, write down the y-intercept. All right, so already there, I'm talking about that y-intercept, which is at what? Uh, 0 minus 4, the y-intercept. Okay, so you can write it, y is equal to minus 4, you can write it as a point. 4.22, use the given points to calculate the gradient of the straight line graph. Use the given points. Points, you must use the points. Which points are we having? These two points, A and B. Remember, A, that's 1, 1. Uh, the point A, remember, it is 1, 1. And the point B, we have got another point, which is B, uh, which is that Y intercept 0 minus 4. Remember, that's our point B, uh, 0 minus 4. And I talked about determining or finding of the gradient from the formula, the change in y over the change in x, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You can use this formula by naming our points x1, y1, x2, y2. So y2 there from our formula, y2 minus y1, y2, that's minus 4, minus y1 here, which is a 1, everything over x2, that's a 0 minus x1, which is a 1. So you can even just simplify everything on your calculator, or you can simplify stage by stage 
that is going to be minus 5 over 0 minus 1, which is minus 1, and that is going to be a positive 5. Remember, gradient m. So you can write m is equal to, or you can write in words, gradient. Just one and the same. That is the gradient. So you can use the points to determine uh, the gradient. I talked about that as a separate topic. So I would expect you to go through that so that you understand uh, the concept. All right, then on another part, you are now given 4.23 to write down the equation of the graph in the form y is equal to mx plus c. Remember this form, it shows m, which is the gradient, and the c, which is the y-intercept. So in this format, we already have our gradient, which is m, and also the C from our graph. Remember, the gradient there, which is 5, the y-intercept, that is minus 4, y-value, which is minus 4, the y-value. So that is our C, the C value that we are given. So if you want to write, you can write it even as C, because you know the format of that, you can even write C. That is the y-value that you are given, the y-intercept, where x is 0, that's a minus 4. And m, which is the gradient, is 5. So it's just substituting in place of m, we are going to substitute, so y is equal to, in place of m, our gradient. Remember, that was 5, so it's going to be 5x plus the y-intercept, which is at minus what? At minus 4. So in this case, a plus and a minus, that's simply a minus. The y-intercept, so meaning to say that was going to be a minus 4. Is this graph an increasing or decreasing function? From the gradient, we can tell being... Positive, the gradient there is it's it's five. Giving a positive, that means it's what it's an increasing function. If it is a decreasing function, it has a negative gradient. Or you can even check the way the x values and y values are related. As the x values are increasing, this side we are seeing that y is also increasing. So it's an increasing function. Or you can relate from the gradient positive gradient that means it is an increasing a negative gradient that is a decreasing function so these are the typical exam questions that we might expect to have in our finals as we can see that's a typical exam question a total of 11 let's work with uh, more questions so that we do understand how are they going to ask you these uh questions at the end uh till we meet again